We keep hearing about the COVID hangover. We just don't do things like we did during lockdown. Some are easy to spot. Obviously, we aren't taking as many at-home COVID tests anymore. Sorry, Abbott Labs. Buy an axe later. We're certainly buying fewer personal computers as PC sales fell 37% post-pandemic. Yeah, it's the worst decline in history. Generally, we stopped spending crazily on our homes and started using our money to go out and enjoy life, at least as best as we know how. That's why I like to say we're in a long-on-money, short-on-time mode that encourages travel over video games or home theaters or other pedestrian indoor diversions. Even consumers are starting to spend beyond their savings. They still prefer to use that money on travel and leisure. But what about pets? Where do pets fit in? Specifically, spending on pets, which boomed during the pandemic. Before COVID, the humanization of pets concept had become an enduring one, a real bull theme. We went from having animals first in the basement, then to the bedroom, and then only in the bed itself. Money seemed no object when it came to taking care of these. Virtually everything pet related made fortunes for investors and companies crowded into the category to take advantage of it. But now people are beginning to wonder if pets have become subtle casualties of the long money, short on time story. When you're stuck working from home, you're with your pets all the time. Boy, it's easy to spoil. Now, though, with people going out more, I think pets are getting fewer resources. If you're out traveling overseas, your pets aren't getting doted on as much anymore. I think the humanization of pet thesis is still in play, but it is definitively weaker than it used to be. So what do we do with all these stocks? How do we balance, say, the cohort of J.M. Smucker and General Mills, both of which make pet food? How about Petco and Chewy, which are pure plays? I like to keep things simple. If you like the pet theme and you don't want to take a lot of risk, then what you do, you buy General Mills. This longtime safety stock had been one of the most boring, unaggressive enterprises around for years, just basically floundering with a decent portfolio of wolf and shuffled brands that generated a ton of cash, gave you a good buyback, nice dividend. We used to say that with its core cereal business, no one ever went wrong buying the stock in General Mills, except for we called it Generous Mills back then. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.